called Lazarus. Like you and I, he was called the friend of Jesus. Hmm. And so he got into a little trouble. And if you serve God long enough, <laughs> you will know that this life is up and down. Who knows what I'm talking about? And just because he fell ill, everybody started to watch him. You got a little broke. They began to watch you. Is the Lord going to come and bail you? One day, two days. The Bible says the Lord seemed to have gone even in the other direction, so he died. So it may be your marriage died. Your business folded up your own money. And so those people who knew you as a friend of Jesus, you used to prophesy, you used to go on evangelism, you used to talk big about the Lord, you are in the prayer squad, and they begin to say, if you were so much the friend of the Lord, how come this problem killed you? How come this problem, that relationship, the fellow walked out on you? And you know, people begin to take positions when things don't seem to be going your way. Like Eliab, he was wearing the Cornell's uniform. This fellow is still wearing rags. And so this man died, the friend of Jesus. I know you're in church trying to look like nothing died. I like your perfume. I like your hairstyle. I like your makeup, but it ain't covering this one. And I'm not saying it in a bad way. Because if you hide it so much, God may not be able to fix it. I'm telling you something. God is up to something. And whosoever took a position against you, they will say, ah, had I known. So this man died. Lazarus, the friend of Jesus, whom Jesus loved. There's something about people that the Lord loves. We go through stuff. Why didn't Jesus hurry before the man died? It's a question you're asking. It's a question I have asked him. But his ways are not our ways. If he fix it that way, what kind of glory would that be? Listen, if anything died here, I have news for you. God is going to turn it around in the midnight hour. There are going to be two kinds of surprises. For those who talked rubbish about you, terrible surprise is waiting for them. For you just crying, I say, Lord, Lord, just help me. There's going to be a pleasant surprise. And so when the Lord finally showed up, and these were his sisters, he said, take me to where my friend, you laid his body. Come, 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 come. Quickly. Nana, come, come. You are Jesus. You finally come and you're in a hurry because you want to see your friend. I said, take me to where you, uh, my friend lies. You walk towards me. I said, no, 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 no. He says, don't go there because by now he stinketh. Meaning I won't go and I don't think you should go. And guess what? This was his sister saying that. Jesus said, take me. Which means, as far as you need to go, so I go there. She didn't even want to go near him. Can I tell you something? All those of you that practice nepotism, listen, there can be a problem. Your sister will forsake you. Some people say blood is thicker than water. The only blood that is thicker than water is the blood of Jesus. He said, no, no, no. He says, by this time, he stinketh. And Jesus said, what did you say? If you would take me, find somebody else to take me there. Because there is a friend that sticketh closer than his sister. And so he proceeded, thank you. John eleven thirty nine. 39, Jesus says, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of Lazarus that was dead, said unto him, I'm reading from New, the King James Version, it says, Lord, by this time, he stinketh. Don't you know he has been dead for four days? Listen, when somebody say, by this time, they are putting a full stop where there used to be a comma. They're saying it is too late. 
Don't bother. She's too old to get married. What does she need a husband for? Can I tell you something? Sarah had Isaac at 90. It is not true. Men or pause does not pause the Holy Spirit. It can pause men. It can pause God. Huh. Hmm. And Jesus went there. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And I'm sure there was a silence for a while. The person says, by this time, is absolutely sure you are not going to get married. By this time, you cannot make it anymore. And so, I don't think they stayed because of faith. They held their nose. This is you, they're holding their nose at your shape. They were waiting to see how can it happen? I serve a notice from the altar of God upon anybody, any group, any alliance, any coalition standing around to say, let me see how it will be a year of pleasant surprises. Because I serve a notice to them that by the time God is through, the only thing they will say, yay! I shouldn't have said what I said. Had I known, I too should have said amen. amen. <laughs> Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says, all of a sudden, him that was dead, and they said, he stinketh. The Bible says, he got up and began to hobble because they wouldn't help him up. They were standing around. They, they were the ones that put bandage around him like an Egyptian money. They thought he couldn't stand. Fellow had to struggle by himself. Say, I am coming out. He started to hobble and Jesus had to tell them, have you not seen enough? Untie him. Take away the bandage and let him go because he that was dead is alive. What a pleasant surprise. Your life this year is going to surprise your enemy. Your money is going to surprise your marriage. The child, the business is going to come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus. What a surprise. Consider what Martha should have thought. The one who told Jesus to his face is too late. By now he stinketh. When Jesus, when Lazarus came out, the Bible says Lazarus sat at the table with Jesus. Everybody came to see Jesus. And the Bible says they came to see Lazarus also. Lazarus became promoted to the rank of Jesus. Can I tell you something? Imagine when they asked Martha, did you not say it was too late? What do you think she would have said? Uh, Lazarus, Mabinu, Biko, ah, had I known? I didn't know. Bible says, had they known, they would not have done what they did. Had they known, they would not say some things they're saying. I trust God that the way He showed it to me is the way it's going to play out in your life. I don't know who that person is. I, I, I'm not fooling with you. If this message is your message, what are you doing? Sit now. You got to show and say, thank you, Lord. Uh, Martha, I thought you said it's too late. I hear God saying there's somebody here. You leave. I see two blocks of flats in a compound. In the other block, there are relatives. Maybe you have heard or maybe you haven't heard. But they have said some things. 
when the time comes when you become their savior the Holy Spirit will compel them to say if you don't already know forgive us had we known we would not have said what we said when that happens I want you to come to the altar and testify because some of you will hear a prophetic word when it comes fulfilled you personalize it I said it in the open why are you keeping it quiet because there are some people here they don't know that it's the God of the supernatural and the word of God is not a respecter of sequence he takes the one at the back and makes him to be the first and if you're believing God for that, why don't you say amen? amen. I, I, want, I want you to sit down. I want to finish this word. Had they known, ah, they would not have said this about Joseph. They would not have said, let's see what will become of his dream. Are you with me? Had they known what? At the time they said it, it looked like, number one, the numbers are on our side. It's ten against one. Benjamin was in there. Number two, we're bigger than you. Number three, we're going to terminate your expectations. Let us see what will become of your dream. You know what they're saying? Mr. Dreamer. There's a difference between you being a dreamer and having a dream. A dreamer is a fool. Who, who dreams nonsense because he ate too much? But the person with a dream is the person that has a revelation of what God is about to do with his life. They were saying, Mr. Dreamer. In fact, they said, here comes the dreamer. Do you know that? They said, here comes that dreamer. That's an insult. I am not a dreamer. A dreamer means all you do is wish. You are just a lazy bob fool and nothing good is going to come out of it. No, 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 no. I am not a dreamer. I am a man with a dream of greatness. And they said, let us take some actions and let us see what will become of you. Let me warn you. Because we are all like Joseph. You have told your dreams to some wrong persons. Either to your knowing <laughs> Uh, or you're not knowing. They have taken a, a, a position against your dream. And these ones were members of his family. Hello. The enemies of a man are outsiders. I said the enemies of a man are outsiders. Oh yeah, keep practicing nepotism. My brother and my sister are equal to God. Keep practicing In this case, they said, here comes the dreamer. Let us see what will become of his dream. They spoke like God. They spoke as God. Every voice. Anybody principality of power, wizard or witch that has spoken like God, we are going to be disgraced in the lives of our ch of the children of the Lord in grace assembly in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are going to be disgraced. Ah, they said, let us see what will become of his dreams. Let me read Genesis 37 verses 19 to 20 to you. Then they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. That's an insult. Every insult, God is going to turn it around. Yeah. It says, come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say, so wild beast has devoured him. He sh we shall see what will become of his dreams. They say, dreamer, dream on. Some people you spoke to about the things you like to do, they say you are hallucinating. Otiyaweri. Idon kolo. They have set up their minds. They have taken a position that that dream is never going to happen. 
But come to Genesis 50, verse 20. Had they known? Had they known? I read Genesis 37 and Genesis 50. Somehow, I think Genesis 50 hey, is the year 2015. <laughs> the year of the fulfillment of the prophecy. This is Joseph speaking. They came into his palace. They came hungry. They came needy. This man has been so blessed. He had exchanged the coat of many colors that was now shrunken for the royal purple robes of a prime minister. He was so blessed they could not recognize him. He had to take away some of the trappings of his office. Come down to their level. He says, it is I, Joseph, the one whom you betray. He says, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. He says, but as for you, you meant evil against me God, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is today. Ha. The message Bible says, don't you see you planned evil against me but God used those same plans for my good. God did not make another plan. God used the insult to be the elevator for this man. He says, God used the same plans for my good. I like this part. As you see all around you right now. As you see all around you right now. God is going to make them come into your territory after God is done with you. He says, as you can see all around you, which means you look to the north or the south, the east or the west, up and down. You're going to find out, baby, God bless me in spite of your not helping me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. At that point, what do you think they're trying to do? Oh, Joseph, had we known that truly your dream is from God? Had we known that God is really on your side. Had we known that worshipping God and serving God is going to show this kind of fruit, we would not have said what we said. Wouldn't it be nice that somebody says, ah, had I known, I would not have criticized your dream. God did not allow them to confront their evil outside. They confronted their evil in the splendor of the man's palace. You know, some things you can't argue against. If you see me outside, you may think I'm not blessed. But if you see me in my palace, where you came to beg for something, do I need to persuade you? That is exactly what God is getting ready to do for somebody under the sound of my voice. What a pleasant surprise it was for Joseph. And what a nasty surprise it was for his brothers. Had they known. The living Bible. Bring me the living Bible. Genesis 50 verse 20. That one says, God turned into good what you meant for evil. For he brought me to what? This high position I have today. Who is that person? He said to them, God turned into good. What you meant for evil, it doesn't matter what people throw at you, God is able to remanufacture it. God, listen, if they didn't do anything, maybe God even didn't have anything to work with. They had to do something to Jesus for him to become the Lord of glory. They have to say some things about you. They have to lie on you. They have to block your way. They have to insult you because that will be the raw material that God is going to turn around for your good. God turned into good what you meant for evil for he brought me to this high position. 
that I have today. <sighs> the place must have gone quiet. The brothers must have looked at each other. What do you think they said to each other? Judah, you talk. Judah said, no, not me. Reuben, you talk. And they said, it was a mistake. Had we known, we would not have done what we need. You know what Joseph said to them? He said, don't be upset at yourself. God needed you to do that. Can I ask you, if they left him in Israel, and his promise is in Egypt. If they didn't send him to Egypt, will his promise come forth? Let me tell you, there is the ministry of your enemies. They are supposed to send you into the blessing of God. Every arrow they're shooting, God is going to convert it to a blessing. <laughs> In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Joseph said, no, 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 don't be upset. You only sent me into my destiny. He said, go home. Go and bring your wives and your children. I will feed all of you. Hey. When they went to tell their wives, what do you think they told their wives? Joseph is calling you. Which Joseph? Eh? Joseph is alive? Yes. Listen. If we stay here, we die. We go and see Joseph. We leave. Plus wife. Plus children, plus son in law, plus daughter in law, plus grandchildren, all of them. Come and they put them in Goshen. Listen, those who will not help you, those who stood against you, stop praying that they should die. It's a foolish prayer. No, they will not die, they will be alive and well. You know what the Bible says? Psalm 23. My cup overflows. They will be collecting the extra. With the voice of thanksgiving, they will be collecting the extra. Joseph said, no, no, no. My cup is running over. Come. Come and collect the extra. Had they known? I said, had they known? Had they known? If you really wanted to finish me, you should have left me alone. Because I would have stayed with my coat of many colors sitting on my father's lap and sharing his food when he's eating. A spoiled little brat going nowhere. You helped me, my enemy. You sent me in the direction that God was going to bless me. Now you can take whatever is running over. I want to declare something. Every satanic interruption is going to give way to a divine intervention in 2015. And it's going to result in a pleasant surprise for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have they known that all things are possible? Uche, where are you? <laughs> There's a song we sing. Oh, I wish I could sing. Have they known that all things are possible? Can you help me just start from there? All things are possible. You know, when people look at your situation, they say that some things are not possible. They say you cannot start all over again. They say you cannot make it. But the Bible says with God, all things are possible. And in fact, nothing is impossible. Have they known? You can go ahead, just sing it. This is the song of your life. If this is your message, I want you to stand and just flow in this song. Begin to look at everything. My hiding place, my safe refuge. No other name like Jesus. No power can stand against you. My feet are planted on this rock And I will not be shaken My hope, it comes from you alone 
Have they known that with God all things are possible? I hear the Lord say, don't let what they said get you down. Because with God, all things. I say to you, don't give up on that dream. Because with God, and in the year of ordained surprises, in the year of surprises ordained by God, all things are possible. If you're here this morning, you have dreams, <laughs> you have aspirations that to the common sense you shouldn't be talking about. According to the order of things, it cannot be your turn. If you face mountains, this is not time for you to do this your Christianist thing. I, what I hear God say in heaven is what I say here. That part that says all things are possible. Listen, your future is in your hands. You say, all things are possible. Me where I? You are nowhere. All things, your enemy is saying all things are not possible. They're grinding. Who knows this thing? I see this thing that native what they call it? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not kidding. I see some people grinding somebody's future. You, they're grinding it like this until it is smooth. You see, when it's so smooth, what can you do? It becomes like powder. I'm going to give you one more chance. I just want that chorus all things are possible. If you will not sing it because of yourself, sing it because of your children. Because whatever carries you will carry your children along with it. All things are possible. 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 Concerning my future. All things are possible. Concerning my family. Concerning our businesses. Concerning our finances. surprises all things are possible because it has to be a surprise because the normal sequence of things will not allow it in a year that there should be economic pressure somebody is going to break through and then at the end of it it shall be said, had we known, 
We could not see it coming to pass. It should not have been, but the Bible says they did not understand it. That God was behind it. Joseph was asking the butler to help him. But his help will come from the Lord. Even the butler, had I known, I would not have chosen to forget you. I leave you with one prayer this morning for those that believe. Against all odds, I declare that all things concerning your dreams are possible. The Bible says concerning this Joseph, his father, his father Jacob took his sons and made them equal to the brothers of Joseph. You know, they paid hugely. Their nephews became their equal. It has never happened before that you take a lower generation and make them equal. But that day it happened. All things are possible. Lift up your hands to God. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. greatness to your name alone the one that is God all by himself the Bible says with God nothing shall be impossible and all things are possible to him that believes if you're here and you believe whatever God has set before you will be established this year in the name of the Lord Jesus and every voice that said it was impossible will end up saying had I known in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, it is your word that I have declared. And you watch over your word to perform it. In fact, you exalted your word above your name. Far above your name. Let the testimonies. The testimonies from the word of God this morning. Surprise some people who are here today. Some people that are here today, the big surprise you're going to get is that from this service you will hear amazing testimonies. And to all believers, whosoever did not help you or agree with you, they will end up saying, Had I known. No matter how much better they are over you today, no matter how much more powerful they are today, they will come and say, Had I known. Because all things are possible with whom who is called our Father. To you alone, O oh God, be the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Help me celebrate God, the one who makes all things work together for our good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated. I encourage you to get a copy of that message. <laughs> Listen to it. Speak it to yourself and expect it to come to pass. You will celebrate soon in Jesus' name. I changed the order of things a bit because I was anxious to declare this prophetic word over you. Now, I'm going to step back a little bit and rush through pastor's announcements. Um, it is good news that the Grace Assembly, the Island Church is back from the long vacation for Christmas and on Tuesday they're going to have their meeting at the same place, Lagos Resource Center 9 and Ifowoshie Street Adela, of Adela Odeku time is 6.30pm on Tuesday now on Wednesday we're going to have our interactive Bible study 
here. But this interactive is going to take a different turn. Because Proverbs verse 2, 18 verse 2 tells us that we should have discussions. The Bible says a fool cares nothing for thoughtful discourse. And then all they do is run off to shoot off their mouth and they don't know enough. Because the elections are coming very soon. First of all, bring up my slide about the voter's card. Please hurry up. The voter's card. Now, how many of you have your voter's card? I know that at least half of the church won't have. How many of you don't have it yet? Your permanent voter's card. Put up your hand. If you lie, I pray fire. <laughs> By a bond them. Some of you are still not putting up your hands. All right. Collect your voter's card. What did I say? Say it loud. So that you can vote for a new Nigeria. Do you know that your vote may be what tips the scales on the right side? Why are you praying when you're not going to vote? You're praying so that other people will go and line up and vote. That prayer is not going anywhere. It, no, it cannot. Because you see, God is both the God of prayer and action. Your action must be consistent with your prayers. Your actions or your inactions may negate your prayers. Help me touch your neighbor. Say, go and collect your voter's card. And you will vote. Amen. Alright. So on Wednesday, stay with me. On Wednesday, we're going to do something. We're going to have a political discussion. You know, last Sunday, hey, can we celebrate Pastor Jude? Last Sunday, State of the Nation. Great stuff, great stuff, great stuff. We have, we have gifts in this house. It's incredible to download everything about the economy in less than 30 minutes. It's genius. We had the State of the Nation and economic review and forecast. But that's one side. This Wednesday, we need to have a political discussion and enlightenment. I'll explain that. I said the fool has no delight in understanding. But in expressing his own heart, the Bible says, a fool does not invest in wisdom. You know what I found out? I found out that everybody knows something. But most people don't know enough. So you see people running away and running all over the place with small, limited knowledge. What I'm suggesting is this. I have had many meetings. I'm having one this afternoon very high powered the last one I had before this one was with JK dinner, four of us so I can ask the questions I want to ask and then some people are talking to me and you're, ch -ch 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 -ch. you have not even had dinner with anybody <laughs> where did you learn this from? pass me, pass me, pass me, pass me, pass me 282 people have passed the information before it got to you and you're, you're, you're making us, you want to die because of adulterated information you know what I'm saying to you? You have some information. Hear my own information. I will take your own information. By the time we put our information together, we have enough information, if even, to shape how we pray. Can I tell you something? It is a foolish prayer when you pray ignorant prayer. It's like Joseph saying, God, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail, but I want to make destiny. I'm going to be a prime minister. Where are you going to do it? How? The road to the palace is through the jail. And that's the kind of prayer some of us are praying. So let us come together. I'm not going to persuade you to vote for anybody. That's not my business. You even getting saved, you got saved because you want to get saved. I'm not going to decide for you. But before you decide, this is an intelligent church. We don't drink oil and start running all over the place. We have medulla oblagata. Yes, sir. Can I tell you? The scientists proven that the, the most phenomenal thing they discovered in the known universe is a human brain. And some people don't use it. So we're going to have an intelligent discussion. Basically, I will ask a question. If I say, why should we vote for the president? If you know why, tell us. 
you to tell us your own. If I say, ah, but what about this one? If you had the answer, tell me. Some people are so big or bigoted, I have made up my mind, don't give me the information. Can you imagine someone say, don't confuse me with the information I've already made up my mind. I thought you make up your mind based on information. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say, I'm going to vote for somebody. I say, okay, why are you voting for the person? And I knock out all <laughs> your reasons. And they start cursing me after that. The fool has no use for understanding. It's just to bah, just talk. So, can I tell you something? Ain't nobody going to fight here. What did I say? Nobody's going to fight. We want to hear what you know. Or don't I tell us what you know. And then tell us what is bothering you. And then maybe somebody here can explain that to you. I'm going for a high-powered meeting today. Very high-powered. And on Monday... I'm having an eye vision. You want to know where? At the camp. You want to know where? In the jail's office. All night. And we're going to be talking. And when I get there, I'm not going to be talking like a religious fool. I'm going to talk I have to have something intelligent to contribute because sensible people are putting together the information so that you can be clear. So you, even if you want to pray, how many of you know that God is an intelligent God? Yes. Do you know what it says about fools? It says fools. Cain has been collected for the back of a fool. That's what Jehovah says. And a fool is somebody that doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's talking. Please stop talking. After Wednesday, you can talk. <laughs> if you don't come, you, you should be expelled from Nigeria. They should take your passport and push you to Benin Republic. Because you are not a good Nigerian. The new Nigeria is for patriotic Nigerians. Thank you. I have some questions I want to ask. Trust me, I don't know some things yet. But I know some of you may have the answer. I'm going to ask some questions again today. They're going to ask me some questions. I'm going to come back better than on Wednesday. I will be ready for that Monday meeting. If you don't come and tell me the things you know, I will take a decision that will affect you. No, it's true. Oh, you don't know I take decisions? Oh, let me tell you something. What the men of God agree, usually God will not tamper with it too. He says, as he is in heaven, so are you on earth. If you know something, you don't tell me. When I get there, I say, ah, okay, let's go like this. God will hold you accountable. Praise God. Please don't bring any politicians here. Because some of you say, ah, our pastor wants to discuss politics. No, it is amongst children of God. I'm not saying politicians are not children of God. No, no. You know what? You know what uh, General Basson just said? You heard that joke? About the Indian? About the, in, the Indian? The Indian? The Jew? And the politician. You want to hear that joke? He said three of them were in trouble. They needed a place to stay. They were, they were, they were lost. So they went to a farmer who had a small barn. The only place available was a small barn where you keep animals, but it was habitable. So when the Indian got there, he ran back. He said, I can't stay there. There's a cow there. We worship cows. How can you sleep in the same room with a cow? No, it's a holy animal. Then the, the Jew went there. He ran back and said, ah, tafia, pa. there are pigs there. I can't sleep there. Guess what happened when the policier went there? The cow and the pig ran out to the farmer. <laughs> Say there is a politician there. <laughs> Please don't tell that it's Obasanjo that told the joke, not Femi Paul. <laughs> Hallelujah! The will of God will be done, but we are the ones going to vote. May you not use your hand to put us in trouble. May you not say, had I known, 
I will have come to Grace Assembly, I wouldn't have voted to put this maniac in power. You see, what is going to come next, I don't want the blood of anybody to be on my hands because I voted the wrong way. So it's not time to be bigoted. It's not time to run around the place. It's time to seek the face of God. It's time to invest in knowledge acquisition before that day comes. So God bless you. See you on Wednesday. And next Saturday, this Saturday, come on, bring it up. The Father's Blessings. How many of you remember that? The Father's Blessings. It's going to be unleashed this Saturday. The Father's Blessing. Not a Father's Blessing. The Father's Blessings. Saturday the 24th and Sunday the 25th. Saturday in the morning, 11 a.m. Sunday, two sessions, 9 a.m. And is it six or five? I think it's five or it's not six. So it's five to seven. So you can go home and prepare for Monday. It's five to seven. All right. Now, how many of you remember that was Pastor Femi Atoebi that taught us about first fruit? Let me, what we have done is we have made copies of that message, the first fruits. It's available for a discounted price for 100 naira. When you're going out, just by listening to it for yourself. Can I tell you something? If you live by calculation, you have not entered the blessing. Everything you do is calculation. You don't know what is called blessing. And that calculation is what has held a lot of people back. The way to break out of living by a calculator, add, subtract, everything, is to obey God. And what God tells you to do will not make sense to you. Because his ways are not our ways. But when you begin to get the results, you will understand. I tell people, I don't live by my bank account. I live by faith. I don't spend money, I spend faith. Because I cannot even understand my own finances. There's a God factor to it. Because if you investigate me, you'll find out that I have to explain some divine blessings. And policemen don't understand divine blessings. So I just say, you don't understand how I live. It's called divine blessings. Praise God. Hallelujah. Please, buy the CD. Listen to it for yourself. I pray that God will instruct you. Particularly in a year where they say things are going to get hard. You better have God on your side. So that is available for 100 Naira, the first food CDs. And... Um, where the January celebrants? All the people that came out for celebration, birthdays and anniversaries, where are you? I have not seen the microphone, so. <laughs> it's almost February. I will withdraw that prayer from you people. Praise God, hallelujah. Come on, celebrate the Lord this morning. <laughs> we serve a good God. All right, tight and first fruit. If you're here this morning, you have your tight and your first fruit, could you please come forward? Come, if I see JK in this church on Sunday, I will know who invited him. And if I see Amber Day around these premises, I will send Holy Ghost fire to somebody who told him. Praise God. Lift up your envelopes. This is very serious. This is very serious. Lift up your envelopes, Father, I pray that in this year of austerity this year of reduced purchasing power these ones that obey God Jehovah I ask that you activate the God factor in their lives and their finances so that they will live according to the economy of God not touched by the heat of the land Lacking nothing and yet enjoying abundance. By the reason of their obedience, set them apart from the crowd. Bless them, bless the work of their hands. Let the resources of God in the heavens and the earth respond to their desire and their business. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Drop your envelopes and go back to your seat. 
Now, everybody, we're almost done. We're just going to take our offering, closing announcements, and we're on our jolly way home till Wednesday. Till Tuesday on the island, till Wednesday here. Listen, all you island people, you two should come. All the island people. Pastor, you tell your people, I want all of them here on Wednesday. Okay. All right, can you stand with your Sunday offering in your hands? If you know that your enemies are going to say, had you known, had they known, wave that offering to the Lord. That every situation that stood against you will say, had I known that God was going to bless him, I wouldn't have done that. Wave it and say, Lord, thank you. Receive Grace Corral as they lead us in offering songs.